Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. making six figures. Today, I am interviewing my friend Brie Western of Brie Western Aesthetics. I think that you are probably going to have a little bit of a tear in your eye listening to this interview. She is an exceptional woman that has gone through a lot in life to get to where she is. And I really hope that her story will inspire a lot of you to believe in yourselves more and probably trust yourselves a little bit more. Um, She is a mom of four and she has two very successful businesses. Enjoy the podcast. Today, I'm here with my friend Brie of Brie Western Aesthetics. (laughs) So I actually, if you don't mind, I would love to start this interview out by talking a little bit about your personal life leading into your professional life. I my interviews are obviously a lot about your professional life, but for you, your story is so impactful. I think it would be really amazing if you would share it. Okay. So can we start there? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, Where shall we begin? (laughs) Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with leading up to the divorce or what prompted that? Um, Well, I think, I think it shows a lot of strength and I think it's a really, it will be a really impactful thing for women to hear. Okay. So leading up to the divorce, um, we had two kids, they were two and four and, um, my ex-husband was, um, extremely abusive and um, very controlling, narcissistic personality. Um, I went from being like a strong, confident woman when I met him, independent, um, to just, you know, being belittled so much that he made me feel like I couldn't do anything without him. Um, So finally getting the courage to just, to leave, to take the kids, and leave was the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Um, My daughter, who was two, was just diagnosed with autism. So he was trying to play that card to get us to stay together for her. And um, it just was getting way too far out of hand that I was just, I knew it wasn't right. I knew I had to leave. there were times where it was just like, it was, it didn't feel like my life. Like, like you this. You were looking in on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, how did this even happen? How did I get to this point? Mm-hmm. Um, how did it go this far? And like, this is not why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so just finally, like, believing in myself and some of your power back. Yes. Yeah. Taking some of my power back. And, um, cause I didn't have any family in Vegas to support us or help us or anything like that. So that was really difficult. Uh, my family is in California and, you know, we would go back there, but I didn't want to move back there because it's mm-hmm. a small, tiny town and which was great to grow up in, but I didn't want to go back. Um, do you think that that's what prompted you because you're a successful entrepreneur? So I think things happen in our lives, good, bad, right? Do you think that that prompted you in a way to create the success that you've created? I think so. I think, you know, when people tell you, you can't do something, you want to maybe prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think so. Um, it just... Wanted, I wanted to prove that I didn't need him or anybody could mm-hmm. do it without them. Um, 
yeah, taking the kids and heading out and just feeling like a weight was lifted Mm -hmm. and I was free and I just like could actually start living my life. Mm -hmm. I think when we were talking about it, you said, I, I think you said something like, I felt like I could breathe again. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was just, I appreciate you sharing that because I do think that there's a lot of women that are maybe in a similar struggle and I don't know why it is, but as women, we blame ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the fact that you stepped out of it and you can look back at it now and see it for what it was, I think is a powerful thing. Yeah, it was, um, it feels like it wasn't even my life now looking back on it. It's mm-hmm. just so surreal and um, definitely taking my power back was was big and not knowing like how the heck I was going to do it because I was just kind of like taking a blind leap of faith Mm -hmm. and just knowing that it would work out (laughs) because it was the right thing to do. So let's talk about that because that led into, so let's talk about your career trajectory. So that's where you started and where did you go from there? So from there, I was a massage therapist before I was an esthetician. So I was dual licensed. And so from there, I when I was with my ex, I was home with the kids. Mm -hmm. So leaving, obviously I needed a job and, uh, I got hired at a day spa in Vegas, um, as a massage therapist. And then when their esthetician went on maternity leave, I stepped in and started doing aesthetics. So, um, you know, and then I, what was that like? Was that a shift for you? stepping into aesthetics. Was it something that you had wanted to do when the space wasn't there? It was something I wanted to do when the space wasn't there. Okay. Absolutely. So I didn't really want to be massaging anymore. Mm It's just so hard on the body and everything. So how long were you doing massage before you stepped into aesthetics? Probably about six months. Okay. So it was a good chunk of time, but not really long. No. Yeah. Well, rewind. Um, I was a massage therapist for seven years. Oh, okay. So, and esthetician for seven Just years. But I took place. time okay. off okay. for the kids. Okay. So, in that place, I was doing um, massage for about six months. And then one of the estheticians went on maternity leave and I stepped in. Um, so, yeah. So, that was... It was great experience. And I learned a lot being there on, you know just everything, um, life and, and business. And, um, because you were essentially working for someone else. I was working for somebody else at that point. Mm -hmm. And what prompted me to open my own spot was that business was super slow. I had just come back from my second maternity leave and I just wasn't getting anything. Mm -hmm. And when you're working on commission, you, you know, Mm -hmm. You need to make money. You need to make a shift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it wasn't working out. So I was like, oh my gosh. I need to but isn't it funny how those shifts, though, lead you into, and they're so uncomfortable at the time, right? But yes. they typically lead you in the direction. I mean, you love where you are now. You wouldn't have been there if it hadn't happened. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it was, it was just like, I need to make money. My husband, um, we had put everything into a business that fell through. Mm -hmm. So that was a whole nother. um, So you were really all on your own financially and everything at that point. Right. So talk about when you went on your own. So you left the, the salon or spa that you were at and you opened what is now for you Western aesthetics, right? What, Right. What was that like for you? So that was super scary because Um, during that process, my husband and I had to go through bankruptcy. So is this your new husband? My new. Okay. So you were remarried. I was remarried. Okay. I was remarried and we put all everything into a business venture that completely fell through, like blindsided us. Um, so he was starting fresh something else. And then we were scrambling to downsize and like pay off everything. And it was just you know, Tough another, time. another, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, valley, if you will. Um, yeah, it was a tough time. So 
we so when you dove into it so like give me the picture so you guys are in a stressful place financially and you decide to start your own business so like, what was the thought for you because I think a lot of people honestly would be like I'm taking a job like right. I'm well what? this is what it was it was like um child care like child care is so uh, expensive there it is. Okay. yes so yeah. finding a job that you know and child care and when you have four kids and like schedules and mm-hmm. all of this to juggle it's easier just to create your own thing right yeah sometimes yeah <laughs> somewhat easier <laughs> right just different it's just different yeah. right yeah. you have more flexibility with scheduling right yeah so we had downsized everything during this whole transition and move Every time I looked at the clock for two months, I saw 555, 555, 555. And to the point where I'm looking at it up like, what does this <laughs> what mean? Is this <laughs> what is going to happen? And um, I just think like you get signs, you know. Mm-hmm. And a girlfriend of mine knew I was looking for something. Mm-hmm. And she texted me and said, hey, I know somebody in Boulder City, Nevada, Um who's selling her little, her esthetician business and you talked to her. So I talked to her and she said, here's the address. It's 555 Avenue B. And, and you're like, I was B. like, <laughs> <laughs> full body chills. Um, and I told Joey, my husband, he grew up in Boulder city and he was like, I don't know. It's, I don't know if that's going to work. You want to be in Vegas. You know, it's a small town. I was like, Okay, well, you might not know, but I know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is like, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. You went with your gut on it. I went with my gut on it, and she was awesome, the girl selling it. um, We just made it work, and she, like, let me make payments to buy it from her, and it was, everything just fell into place. It's like, when you decide to go for things, the universe will just, like, conspire for you, you know? Like, it just all fell into place, and... That's when it was actually Lux Skin Studio was the name of it there. And we ran Facebook ads and my head, that's what my husband does is he's Facebook marketing. So he, we shot videos and he ran the ads and in like two months I was up and running. Mm -hmm. So what was that like starting a business for the first time? Because that was the first time you were essentially independent, right? It was scary. It was mm-hmm. really scary. I, I had no idea what I was doing. Every woman <laughs> that I've ever talked to that has started a business, that's their first description. Yes. It's scary. <laughs> it was like, uh, you know, you just have to learn as you go. And mm-hmm. and you'll make mistakes and then you figure it out. But just go for it, you know, even even if you are scared. So how long did it take you to hit six figures? Because I know for you... For some of my guests, that isn't that that's not their focus. For you, that was a really, really significant benchmark. So will you yeah, talk about that? Absolutely. It was it took a year to hit six figures. And it was just like kind of surreal and just made me feel so proud of myself. Mm-hmm. And like just you can do hard things, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you just believe in yourself and go for it and and show up every day for yourself and invest in yourself. Um, one of the big things, because I, as a solo esthetician, you're on your own, like, mm-hmm. and not ever doing that before. It's scary. You don't know, like, you could have no one to bounce ideas off of. Um, so I joined, it's called the Beauty Biz Club. And it's just like an awesome group of estheticians that are there for each other and make you feel like you're part of like a family. Mm -hmm. So, which is funny because I joined and it was like $89 a month. And I was like, oh, this is stretching it. (laughs) And now it's like, (laughs) you know. But at the time, but don't you, I mean, I am so glad that you said that because I do think that there's a lot of things that were like, oh, should I invest? Oh, should I invest? Yeah. When you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the best money I ever spent. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't necessarily feel like it at the time. No. Oh, yeah, I've had like, loads uh, of those over the years. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like, oh my gosh. 
89 is so much, but it, it was amazing. Just like strategies and marketing and, mm -hmm. and just being there to vent or to ask questions or, you know, formulations or, you know, what would you do in this situation with this client? Or mm -hmm. it makes you feel like you're not alone. Yeah. And Dark we all room. need that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we all need that. Yes. So true. So question on the motherhood side. So business owner, motherhood, you mentioned you did it because <laughs> childcare, right? Right. What does that look like over the years? Because, because I love this, um, this elusive balance that everybody's like, find balance, find oh balance. Gosh, like, yeah. So how's the balance It's like a going? juggling act. It's yeah. not really. <laughs> Some weeks are better than others. Um, it was rough to get started because we didn't have family to help. We didn't have, like, couldn't afford, like, childcare mm -hmm. when we first started out. So we would work opposite schedules or try to balance, balance that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was definitely a juggling act. It was super difficult. Mm -hmm. And my youngest was eight months old when we started. So mm -hmm. then you have the, like, mom guilt right. going on. And they don't even remember it. No. But you kill yourself over it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. So do you have, what would be your parenting tip now? <sighs> Give yourself grace and you're doing the best you can, you mm -hmm. know, and they love you no matter what. Mm -hmm. So don't beat yourself up over little things and pick your battles. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. 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 That's a really good <laughs> one. <laughs> so now you have essentially two locations. Right. Yeah. So you're managing not only children and right. a successful business, but different locations. And so what am I not asking you that you think, oh, this would be as part of my story. This is something that women could really learn from. I think just um, hmm. believe in yourself. Yeah, I think that's a good one because you could be in the darkest place and just like believe in yourself to dig yourself out of there and to like it might seem like you're just in a hole, but you reach for a better feeling thought and like, just, I mean, really like going internally, I do a lot of meditation, but more like guided meditation mm -hmm. um, to just help me release all of that like negativity and just things that you absorb throughout the day and ugh, thoughts, mm -hmm. all the you know, but I love the way you said that reach for a better thought, a better, right? Because I think a lot of times what will happen to us is if you stay in your head, you spiral down. Right. If you don't intentionally choose to, I'm going to look at this in this way, or I'm going to believe in myself anyway, because, right? Right. So you can make that choice. And I think that that's a really powerful statement. Yeah. Okay. So last question, book or podcast? Uh, <laughs> or both uh, but which one would you recommend to the audience <laughs> so I love Dr. Joe Dispenza um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself the book Ooh, I haven't read that one it's it's life-changing that's awesome yeah especially you know coming from like my past and mm -hmm. and building yourself up and all of that so I love podcasts because I my drive to work was 25 minutes. So I'd put on something and listen to it at home and, and, um, on the way there and on the way home, but yeah. And, and audio books are my favorite yeah, cause say sitting audiobooks. down with a book like never happens for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For kids. Yeah. And two businesses. Like, like <laughs> it's so funny. Cause I asked this question of all of my interviewees. Right. And it's funny. I had one woman look at me like, when do I have time for that? Like, what the heck are you talking about? Right. And I asked book once and one of them said, um, in our house right now, we're doing, I can't remember. It was like a child's book. Like that's what's, that's what's on tap for us <laughs> right now. <laughs> she had two really little ones. I'm yes. Like, oh yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll put an audio book in and like 
clean the house or do the dishes and stuff just mm-hmm. like in my ear going but yeah I wish I could sit down and read a book <laughs> in a hammock yeah <laughs> later yeah 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 thank you for doing this yeah and thank you for opening up I don't think you know how impactful that opening piece that I know you were hesitant to share but it, it will really impact so thank Good. you for doing that Good. my pleasure yeah thank you Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.